What's up everybody, it's Moist Sauce from The Civ Show and today we are gonna do a reaction video to the February release, so let's get started. Trample the weak, hurdle the dead, and crush the gods of those that stand against you. First of all, Carl, you look amazing. Just wanna point that out. This is amazing. Is this the barbarian? Oh, oh, uh, I might have spoiled it for myself. Because this is the barbarian update video. Oh, it is. Okay. Uh, actually, this is the developer video for the free February game update in Sid Meier. Why? Oh, I had all these theories going on in my head. I'm like, oh, that's why they showed the, the barbarian doll or the action figure, whatever you want to call it. Nah, I don't know anymore. Meyer's Civilization VI. Fiv Meyer's Civilization. Nonsense! I shall feast upon your bones! Oh, Carl. Never change, buddy. Never change. He does this every day. This video is going to discuss the new Barbarian Clans game mode, the leader selection pool, and some of the balance changes and AI tweaks that will be coming to you for free. Like okay, Barbarian Clans. Barbarian Clans. From Zoe's prediction, he's going to think that Barbarians can eventually turn into civs, or maybe they can actually take over cities and be their own civilization, a Barbarian civilization. That would be really cool. Later this month. So fill a tankard with the blood of your enemies. Mount up on your fastest horse and hold on tight because the Barbarians are getting their revenge. And this time, they're bringing war cards. Three of the most oh. exciting things about the new Barbarian Clans game mode are that it's awesome, obviously, it's free and everybody gets it. Even if you only have the base game okay. and none of the expansions or DLCs, or if you have it all, you will right. have access to this new optional game mode that offers a complete reimagining of Civilization VI Barbarians. The Barbarian Clans mm. mode was directly okay. inspired by some of the suggestions our scouts found among the thorny grasses of your social media posts. Oh no, uh oh, okay, okay. What the heck is this? They have like a fortification health? Oh my goodness. A lot of you have been wanting to see some changes to the standard kill or be killed interactions with barbarians in Civ 6. We agree, there was a lot of untapped potential there. This mode introduces six barbarian clans, allows clans to- Yo, shout out to the video editor. These are some clean transitions. One, like look at this. You got, first of all, this thing, clean as heck. And then you got this transition here, Clean as heck as well. This mode introduces nice. six barbarian clans, allows clans to convert into city-states, and gives you all new ways to interact with them. For starters, <laughs> different clans so can be found living on or near different map conditions. You'll find the Camps of the Hills clan near hills, and the Rover clan near horses resources. <laughs> Wait, what? You'll find the River clan near horse resources? Near horse map conditions. You'll find the Camps of the Hills clan near hills, and the rover clan near horses resources. A rover, rover, To make combat rover. with barbarians Got even it. more interesting. There is a eagle warrior here. This terrifies me, by the way. Clans can also claim and build unique units from major civilizations that are not present in that game. Clans accumulate progress every turn toward conversion into a city state, because sometimes even barbarians want to enjoy the creature comforts of civilization. <laughs> Depending on how you interact with clans you encounter, you can either add or subtract to their progress towards a life of leisure. One, uh, Van Bradley is gonna be very mad that there's no tea in this cup. Two, pinky out, very nice. Three, you have makeup on your mustache. How hard was that to get out afterwards? I have to know. Towards a life of leisure. Dispersing a <laughs> I was not expecting that. Okay. Clan I'm sorry. Will wipe it off the face of the map as you're used to. However, choosing to raid a clan will not destroy it. Instead, you'll earn some gold and knock down some oh. of that clan's progress towards city state conversion. You can stop a clan from attacking your cities by paying a modest. This is a oh my gosh, this is almost I don't want to say a direct ripoff, but this is so similar to humankind and how you have to pick certain things 
uh, depending on like what scenario it gives you. For example, it was like, what a calendar do you want to adopt? And so you can adopt the lunar calendar or the solar calendar. And depending on what you pick, uh, certain aspects of the game change. Like if you pick the solar calendar, you you have like better irrigation. If you have picked the lunar calendar, I can't exactly remember the exact turn off to that one, but this is exactly laid out the same way. This is really interesting. This is really cool. Protection fee in the form of a bribe. You can also hire a clan and so what is it? Spend 67 gold to prevent this clan from attacking your cities for 13 turns. You can bribe them. Okay, interesting. Spend 102 gold to hire an eagle warrior from this clan. So you can recruit unique units from other civilizations who are not in the game. So I can get eagle warriors and then eventually start killing people with these warriors and get builders from them? Oh, wow, this is amazing. In sight, spend gold to encourage this clan to attack another nearby civilization or city state. Wow. That, that is awesome. I love it. I can say, pay a barbarian's gold, hire them as mercenaries, and be like, hey, listen, go to Zoe's cities or go to Nystagmus' cities. Go attack them for me so I don't have to do it. And I don't have to pay. I don't have to be the bad guy. The barbarians will do it for me. This is amazing. This is amazing. Add its strongest unit to your army. Exchanging coin in these civilized encounters will boost the clan's progress towards conversion. Or spend your gold to incite them and pay them to attack someone else while you deny all culpability. <laughs> Lest you start getting too comfortable around your That's barbarous so allies and they abduct one of your civilian units, you also have the option to pay a ransom in order to get that unit back if a combat rescue isn't in the cards. Oh, wow, okay. Overall, the Barbarian Clans mode will offer even more strategic possibilities as you make your way through the game. You can still treat barbarians like the empty-headed gold pinatas you're used to, or you can try a more nuanced <laughs> approach learn to live together, and maybe, eventually, become their suzerain. Wow, that's the so awesome! The free February game update also introduces another new feature that we've seen one or two requests for. Ever since we launched the Natural Wonder Picker and then the City State Picker, there's been a lot of conversation about a similar picker, but for opposing civilizations. We have answered oh, your calls and are proud nice. to introduce the Leader Selection Pool. That's right, you will nice. now be able to customize the pool of leaders doesn't affect us too much for, at the Civ show, but for the single player streamers and the single player players, and like, I guess for, during our solo streams every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, this is actually can come in handy. So like, you know that you don't want to face against Korea. You don't want to have a ton of science in your game. So you say, no, nope, I don't want Korea in my games or no, nope, I don't want Persia in my games because I don't want them murdering me on turn 20. This is, this is a very nice change. I really enjoy this. That can be used in a game. If you find Trajan to be too big of a bully, you can eliminate him from your selection pool. And Perfect. He's guaranteed not to appear in your game. Similarly, if there's a leader you've never played against and want to see how you measure up, you can make sure they're one of the only leaders available, guaranteeing them a spot on your map. The leader selection pool can hmm. even be used in multiplayer mode to restrict the leaders other players can choose. Okay, this is a big deal. This is awesome. Oh, uh, thanks for heading. Oh, thank oh. This is Carl looking out for the Civ show. Like, hey, I know that you guys like to have these themed games where you pick a random civilization, but you don't want to have like a completely random one. This, Carl, thanks for looking out, bud. This is awesome. Thank you. Also included in the free February game update are some additional tweaks to the AI. For inspiration here, we not only looked to your comments on social media, but also looked up into the sky. The bulk of our AI changes involve air units and air combat. AI oh, opponents sick. will now be much more likely to utilize anti-air defenses, as well as much more likely to launch airstrikes of their own. This should add another level of late game challenge to anyone who's looking for it and prevent the AI from being completely bombarded. We've also nice. made a few okay, balance good. changes. Good, 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 good. Some of these affect only rise and fall or gathering storm expansion content. Most of the changes are for all rule sets. For example, we've shifted around some policy slots available to certain governments to more accurately reflect the way those governments would run in reality, and to better okay. align the playstyles you might anticipate when you select them. We've also rebalanced some natural wonders and made some text clarifications in natural wonder descriptions. As an example, we've added a campus adjacency bonus to the Great Barrier Reef. Oh, thank as God. As a nod to the oh invaluable marine biology research performed there in real life. Oh. Another wonder who's changed some of that was a That was a well-needed change. I remember reading that on Reddit and being like, why doesn't the Great Barrier Reef, the Great Reef, the Great Barrier Reef, 
provide science adjacency, but a reef does, a regular reef. That just made no sense. So thank you for that change. You might be interested in the Cliffs of Dover. <gasps> the Cliffs will now provide three gold, three culture, and two food. Oh my God, this is... <laughs> Wow, they listen to the memes. They listen to the memes and the Cliffs of Dover now provide food. How could you not love Firaxis as a company? They just, they listen to fan feedback and they implement it into the game. Thank you, Firaxis, for being a bro. One more word about the Cliffs of Dover and I will cut out your tongue with my dullest blade. So there it is, folks, all the important beats from our free Ugh. February game update, headlined by the optional new game mode Barbarian Clans and the leader selection pool to customize the sieves that can appear in your game. Expect the update on February 26th, and don't forget to tune back in when we hit April to learn about the final <laughs> free game update of the season. Civ fans, you are the best fans in gaming. Thank you all for watching, and we hope you enjoy taking one more turn. Or depending on how many Barbarian Clans you intend to raid, one more burn. <laughs> Yo, Carl, way to go, bud. That was awesome. That was, is this a hint at something, by the way? This, uh, this little, uh, catapult here? We is that like a, is that, is, do you think that's a, that's a hint towards maybe an, another game mode, like the, a siege? Or are they gonna add another sieve that has specialty to siege? This will be interesting. I think that Civilization 2 test of time, the reason why they picked that game, like if you look here, now it's Civ 6. So they purposefully picked Civ 2 test of time. I'll need to do more research into why they specifically chose that game. We now know that that barbarian action figure has now come into this update. So clearly they purposefully picked Civ 2 test of time. Overall, I think this is actually a really good update, especially as a free update. There's a lot going on here. You have the leader picker, which is awesome. You have raging barbarians, essentially, or the barbarian clan game mode. I think that's really cool. That might be a that might be like something that sticks around in our games. I just think it's kind of cool, and I, I I don't think it's very realistic even that barbarians are still a thing in like 20 AD or 20,000, 20, 2000 AD. <laughs> the fact that they can evolve into city states is really cool. And then also when you eliminate city states, there's chances that more can come and then they more that spawn. There's lots of city states that could be had. It just makes owls more powerful than it already is in uh, multiplayer. Having some natural wonder changes as well. That was that was awesome. The Great Barrier Reef now giving a huge uh, science campus bonus. Because I think it's a three tile wonder, right? So it can possibly give you like plus six if it's plus two each time. That's, that's pretty good. I don't know. I think they nailed this update. I think this update is really, really cool. It's something that I'm going to be looking forward to. If you haven't already hit subscribe, you definitely should. And I'll see you in the next video.